Welcome to Launch It. Um, we're kicking off the Space Apps uh, Challenge in New York. It's this weekend, so hopefully you've bought your tickets. They're sold out. Mike is going to go into a little bit about Space Apps NYC and what they're doing, what you can expect this weekend. We have three very, very, very fun speakers, so uh, hope you all enjoy it. And first, Mike Caprio. So, Mike. Hello? Yes, it's working. Hi, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I see a lot of familiar faces, actually a few from uh, previous Space Apps challenges, so welcome. Great to see you guys again. Uh, really excited about uh, this year's event. Um, so we actually have been running, uh, Space Apps NYC has been running since 2012. Uh, it's a joint project between Startup Bus New York City and the New York Tech Council. Um, we're really, really super excited this year because we have a tremendously huger event uh, we've run the hackathon for the last three uh, events, the last, uh, last couple of years. And this year we have this, our inaugural festival and conference. We have over two dozen speakers coming to talk about all kinds of topics, soft robotics, uh, science at NASA, um, ha what happens to your body in a vacuum, like just all these really cool, fun things. And we have exhibitors coming. The American Museum of Natural History will be doing its first ever off-site exhibits at our event. Uh, we have the Intrepid Museum coming. We have all kinds of really, really fun activities for the whole family uh, and a really, really inclusive event lined up. We actually have daycare that we're providing for our hackathon participants and NASA's first ever data boot camp happening on Friday as well. Um, so I don't want to take too much time up. I know you guys want to hear from our really awesome speakers. Uh, I just want to say, please follow us uh, at Space Apps NYC on Twitter. Uh, you can watch the live stream of the entire conference at spaceappsnyc.com. Uh, we also have a meetup group, which we'd love to have everybody join if you're not already on it. Um, uh, again, meetup.com, spaceappsnyc. And with that, I will turn it over to Peter. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm Peter Raymond, uh, CEO and founder of Human Condition Global. Uh, I want to thank WeWork for helping us out both with the venue and the beer. Uh, we pulled this together really quickly. Kyla, thank you for that. She used her networking skills and uh, pulled this all together. Thank all of you for coming and joining us. What we wanted to do was tonight have an ability for you guys to kind of meet and greet, hang out, get excited for the weekend. You'll be heads down. You're going to be working on some really fascinating, important things. We wanted just to give you some kind of fun downtime before the, uh, the fun starts this weekend. Human Condition Global is an innovation think and do tank. So we work through conceptual ideas, discovery, find opportunities, but we also work on accomplishing the outcomes and solutions for that. So that includes uh, engineering, design, usability testing, uh, really looking at the deep full stack from the atom to the mouse click and beyond. We're currently working with a great group called Final Frontier Design who's in the Brooklyn Navy Yard developing the new spacesuit uh, to support the International Space Station to 2025. New York is a really interesting place because no one would think that space is actually happening here and we're really looking to bring that uh, to a, a greater awareness as well as bringing those people that can help us collectively with resources. We have Wall Street right here. Right, let's change the way that we invest in things. Let's look at the importance of the space program. When we look at what the space program has done for our daily lives, everything from toothpaste, uh, toothpaste to baby formula, Kevlar to LED lighting, uh, it's amazing the depth that the space program in the past has created. And here, you're helping create the future of what that is and how does that integrate into our daily lives as well as uh, the future of where we go next. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, good luck, Godspeed. Hello everybody, my name is Wright. Um, I'm a Startup Us Europe director. I'm a, a serial entrepreneur. Um, and uh, interestingly, I was actually supposed to become an opera singer, but uh, instead I uh, turned towards tech ventures. So today I'm here <coughs> to, um, uh, to uh, meet the good people of New York because um, I'm uh, meeting up local uh, uh, Startup Bus uh, New York uh, chapter representatives. Uh, and um, why it's uh, relevant that I'm speaking to you here is the following uh, thing. I want to ask you a question. What do you think? What is the citizenship uh, of the first settlers on Mars? 
how long will it take until they declare independence? This is an interesting time when we are living because not only are we exploring the uh, frontiers of uh, human knowledge, but we are rethinking ground up uh, a lot of the legacy framework um, that, um, that we are currently experiencing, including social and cultural ones. Now, this is something that we are doing back in Estonia. This is a tiny speck uh, somewhere uh, between uh, yeah, uh, Finland next to uh, Mother Russia and, uh, and some other tiny, uh, tiny nations. Uh, we are uh, working on an initiative called e-residency, electronic residency. Um, essentially, it means um, that anybody who uh, applies and uh, goes through the uh, rigorous vetting pro uh, process is able to become the uh, full uh, resident of uh, Estonia and is able to tap into one of the most innovative um, um, government and private sector and uh, uh, citizen uh, uh, interaction platform, what we term as the X-Road. It's, uh, it's like a highway of uh, uh, digital interaction between a citizen, uh, the public, and the companies. Now, when we created this, um, uh, when we created this um, uh, e-residency initiative, it actually stemmed from a similar type of um, uh, framework. What uh, Human Condition is doing here at the United States, uh, um, back in Estonia, we have a different title for that in a very cryptic language, which only 1.3 million, well, actually no, 900,000 people speak. But, uh, but the point remains the same. We are trying to uh, rethink what we're doing here, uh, not only on, you know, on the frontiers, but also on the home front. So I'm very interested to take part of the Space Apps uh, uh, Hackathon uh, this weekend to um, and to meet people with whom to discuss uh, how we can take this um, e-residency concept further. It's currently been in the incubation uh, format for about a year. Now it's open for uh, early innovators. We have over 2,000 uh, uh, people signed up. And what sign up really means is they have literally applied for a digital residency. You know, some of them also from the United States. Uh, and they're able to now tap into a whole new world of digital services. Um, for instance, uh, you never need to see an IRS official anymore uh, when dealing with your company uh, and, the, uh, and, the, and the public sector. So these are the things that uh, we are looking into in Estonia. Um, and Something that really resonates well with the Startup Us Europe uh, project that I'm currently uh, heading, in addition to my own ventures, is that you might not realize this uh, over here, but uh, it, you know, in, a st in, in Europe, there are uh, borders between countries which are very much so, uh, you know, um, um, describing the uh, cultural areas. Uh, uh, of those nations. And for you guys, you know, switching from the startup or hackathon scene from, uh, I don't know, Austin to, to New York to, to, to Vancouver to, to, to San Francisco, doesn't really matter. You just go and, and mingle. Whereas, uh, awkwardly enough, uh, in Europe, um, the startup um, uh, scene really ends at the, at the, at the uh, nation's border. And with Startup Us literally taking software engineers, uh, designers, mm, entrepreneurs uh, uh, on a road uh, of success in 72 hours, driving people from, uh, you know, from one city to another across several uh, uh, nation states, meeting and, and, and um, uh, encouraging people to, um, to meet uh, different um, different uh, nation representatives at these pit stops, it really sort of uh, uh, binds the whole European uh, tech nation together. So what, uh, what uh, 
I'm doing here this, um, this time for, for the next one and a half weeks, staying mostly in the New York area, is meeting up with a lot of people to better understand how we can, how we can um, turn Startup as uh, Europe into a sort of a similar um, virtual residency program whereby the startupers are truly digital nomads like you guys are here. Uh, it doesn't really matter geogra from the geographical point of view where you are operating uh, or where you are networking and uh, we want to bring those walls down back in Europe as well. Okay, um, I'm open to any questions either now or later on just approach me and uh, I'll be happy to tell you about the very awkward and and a bit of a funny story how I turned down opera singing and uh, started up uh, instead uh, tech ve uh, ventures. Thank you. Okay, James. Thank you very much. Hey guys. Um, a word of warning, I, I've, I had a bit of coffee before I stood up, so if I uh, gingerly set down the mic and leap into that plant, just let me swing around for a little bit. Uh, maybe somebody grab me a beer, calm me down a little bit. Um, but uh, you guys, thank you so much for letting me talk to you uh, about uh, my little adventure. Um, thank you so much to Human Condition and WeWork. I'm always surprised when people give me a microphone. Uh, so. Um, so let me, let me tell you a little bit about who I am and why I'm here and, uh, and why space is so incredibly important to me and why I get so incredibly excited about things like this happening. Uh, like I mentioned, my name is James Wanga and I got my start in this community in 2013 uh, when uh, my wife, who knows I love space, told me, James, go to the space hackathon. Like we just had our first kid. And, uh, and I was coming up with all kinds of excuses why I should just stay at home. And she said, no, James, go. This is what you love. It'll be exciting. And I, and I showed up with this duffel bag full of crap that I, that I, that I hack all the time. Uh, you know, Arduinos, and, and I had an Oculus Rift that I, you know, kick-started and never actually opened. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I showed up with this big bag of stuff, and I, the night before I said, uh, hey guys, there's, there's a challenge on, uh, on the Space Apps website that looks really interesting. Uh, NASA has become deeply interested in asteroids. Um, uh, asteroids are these amazing objects that may turn out to be the seeds of life here on Earth and potentially elsewhere in our solar system. If, uh, if some, some recent missions uh, you know, uh, gather the right data, we may turn, it may turn out that life is, is actually not all that rare. Um, and so I was like, oh man, asteroids sound cool. And NASA had this plan to, 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 to do this rendezvous with an asteroid. And I was like, hey, uh, wouldn't it be cool if you could 3D scan an asteroid so that you could learn about it without having to bring samples of that asteroid back to Earth? Um, how could we build an asteroid scanning satellite in 48 hours? Well, you can't. Uh, what you can do is build an analog. Um, and, uh, and this is what hackers are good at. I'm, I'm, I call my, you know, professionally, I guess, being an engineer keeps the lights on. Uh, but I'm actually not a great engineer. Um, I'm a really good hacker. I'm, uh, I was, uh, I grew up in, in well, I was, uh, spent my early years in Kenya. And, 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 you know, we had a pretty comfortable middle class existence in Kenya. But in Kenya in the 80s, there were really no toys. So if you wanted to play with something, you had to build it. And a great place to build things from, or a great place to get materials to build things from, is the dump. So we had this big dump by our house, and me and my friends, uh, at way too young an age now that I'm thinking about it, would scale this fence and jump on the other side of the dump, and we'd take apart old cars, and we'd build stuff out of the old cars that nearly killed us uh, multiple times. Um, and, uh, and so I love to hack. I love to take things and build new things that, uh, that work in a way that they shouldn't. Um, and, uh, and so that's, that's what I decided to do. And it turned out that a whole bunch of other people like me exist and showed up to this hackathon. So we just went crazy and we spent 48 hours building this thing uh, and we built this drone that had a, uh, 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 we, we constructed a sonar from scratch and it scanned the room in, in, in real time and we're like, look, 
we could build a really inexpensive asteroid scanning robot. And uh, we ended up winning the, the hardware prize uh, and then didn't think much of it after that happened. I'm going to kind of rush to the story a little bit because there's some other things I want to say. Um, until one day we get an email from, from NASA. And, uh, and they said, hey, we actually think we're going to go ahead with this asteroid redirect mission. And for those of you that are unfamiliar, NASA is planning on retrieving a near-Earth asteroid and dragging it back to orbit around the moon to one of the Lagrangian points, which is like a stable orbit between, uh, between the moon and, and, uh, and Earth, and then sending asteroids to land on this thing to study it. Like, we're living in the future. <laughs> like, this is insane, right? And so NASA says, yeah, you know, I think we're going to do this. Uh, your idea is kind of interesting. Do you want to come down to DC and pitch us? And I'm like, I'm, I'm a JavaScript developer. <laughs> like, honest to God. Um, and, uh, and so I, I, I talked to a couple of my team members, and I was like, guys, uh, I mean, I'm just I'm going to go down there and see what they say. And, and I went down, and I, and I uh, got to be a part of this inaugural, this, this kickoff for, for NASA's asteroid redirect mission. And I came back and, and got on the... On a, on a Google Hangout with, with all of the people that were on my team, and I was like, these, these guys are for real. They want us to actually submit a proposal. Um, does anybody know how to build a satellite? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and we got to work. We just started Googling things and, uh, and, uh, and, and got to work uh, creating this plan. I'm going to skip over a lot of the details because there's this one really fascinating part of the story that I love to tell. See. We were proposing that we wanted to build a tiny little satellite, because satellites are usually these massive affairs. We wanted to build something the size of a shoebox. And one of the problems with small satellites is it's hard to get them to move in space, because propulsion tends to take up a great deal of volume budget inside of a satellite. So we needed to come up with a novel propulsion method. Well, it turns out that some really clever people at some incredibly impressive universities had developed, or at least in theory, a type of ion propulsion that could work on microsatellites, but no one had ever successfully got it in space. I got to tell you guys, one of the best things in the world sometimes is being just stupid enough. You know? Like, sometimes if you're too clever, you talk yourself out of stuff. And I like to believe that I live life being just stupid enough <laughs> not to talk myself out of some things. And so we go, hey, you know, let's do this thing. Um, we started planning, and there's this moment uh, where one of our team members, it was kind of in the early stages of planning, was walking through Brooklyn, muttering to herself about these plasma thrusters. And she's crossing the street and going the other way is a guy who stops her and says, are you talking about plasma thrusters? This is in the middle of Brooklyn. And uh, she says, yeah, it's weird. I just got my PhD from Princeton in plasma physics, and I'm really interested in a job building plasma engines. And uh, I'm not kidding. Like, this is, this is New York. And, and he, ended, he joined our team. And we had two weeks to build a working version of this plasma thruster to display it uh, in front of NASA at, at, at Maker Faire. And I said, hey, guys, why don't we just create a 3D printed model of this thing? That'll be impressive enough. And somebody blurts out, no, let's just build it. I'm like, we got two weeks. We can't build an ion engine in two weeks. Why can't we try? So we lock ourselves in a, in a, in a, in a, in a Brooklyn apartment, uh, in a dingy Brooklyn apartment for two weeks. And, and I, you know, I, I, set a, I set fire to a couple credit cards buying, uh, you know, vacuum chambers and all kinds of weird scientific equipment. And in two weeks, we built a working uh, a vacuum arc thruster. It's a type of ablative plasma thruster uh, that had never been built on an actual spaceship before. Um, and there was, this, there was this moment where the inner seven-year-old in me just went like, yeah, right? Uh, we were at Maker Faire, and around the corner, uh, this guy's looking, and he said, this is a very, very interesting thing that you guys built here. Um, and you know, we, we give the pitch, and, uh, and it turns out that it's NASA CTO who would stop by our booth. And he was like, you know, we've been trying to work on these and get them onto to, to micro uh, satellites. Um, would you guys be interested in coming to JPL and, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and seeing some of the stuff we're working on? We're like, hell yeah, we'll come to JPL <laughs> see what the stuff we're working on. Anyway, I'm running really short on time. The point I wanted to make, the, 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 the sort of the arc of my message is, guys, we are living in a fantastic time. The cost of putting things in space and doing and building things using space technology has dropped so fast that no one seems to have noticed. There was this point in time in the 70s when the cost of silicon dropped really, really quickly, and a handful of guys 
whose names have become synonymous with technology, technology the jobs and the, and the, and the, the moors and, the, and, the, and the, uh, uh, the gates of the world. They realized that moment and they seized, they seized it to create the personal computer revolution. I'm telling you right now, I've spent two years in the thick of space technology, it's happening. Come to the Space Apps Challenge. What will happen to you there and the things that you'll experience will be some of the most singular moments in your life. We are living in this incredible, incredible time and if, you, if you're a nerd and if you love space, this is where you should be. Um, there's so much more that I wanted to say, but there's not a whole lot of time. Uh, so so I, I, if you guys have any questions, I would love to answer them now or, or afterwards. Uh, I can talk about this until I lose consciousness. So, uh, so please, yeah? Any questions? Maybe later. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. So that's the programming. Um, so the reason you're all here, um, we sent the invite out to Startup Us community, to the Space Apps community, and to the WeWork community because you're all really smart people. So talk to each other, have great conversations, like talk about what you heard, talk to our panelists and our speakers. They're amazing. There's a lot of really cool stuff that you're all working on. So just take advantage of that time. Um, a huge thank you to WeWork. They gave us the space. They provided the beer that you're all drinking. Um, Human Condition Global provided the, the snacks and the food. So thank you to them, and thank you guys for all coming. Have fun. Enjoy your time. <laughs>